Wednesdays. Today we are looking at the figure 8 marble lifting system. The marbles will be lifted up by hidden magnets inside these two plywood gears. And I need to make a connection that will pick up the marbles from the lower gear and drop them off in the higher gear. This connection needs to transfer over 1000 marbles per minute with zero room for error. So the 5A0000 sub-assembly plays a crucial part in this mechanical music instrument that I'm trying to build, the Marble Machine X. Building the Marble Machine X has been a long process. I started by building this prototype, but it wasn't good enough. My big dream is to play this music instrument live on a world tour, and for that I needed to build something much better. So I made some drawings, learned how to design in CAD, and right now I'm assembling the 8000 parts. This project has become so complex that I now have a team of 14 engineers from all over the world helping me getting the Marble Machine X ready for the stage. <laughs> I am not really sure if I've just lost all my marbles or if I'm actually making a modern masterpiece. Probably both. <laughs> Either way, you can follow the progress every week here on Vintagot on Wednesdays. All these parts to be really easy to weld together. I'm still such a TIG welding beginner and it really helps that every part registrates to a perfect opening in another part. So there's no measuring, there's no distortion problem, nothing. I don't even have to use filler rods. But I also discovered a big mistake here. So the screw here is going to be trapped once the support ring for the PMMA pipe is welded on. This is really typical. It looks great in CAD in the computer, but then in real life it's immediate facepalm moment when you realize something like that. Once that support ring is on, I won't be able to insert that screw. But I'm just going to put it in before welding the ring on and, well, hope for the best. Et voilà. So this trapped screw that I didn't think was a big deal is actually ruining a lot. <laughs> so I need to make the screw shorter and since it's trapped, I can't just change it. I have to cut it in place. So kind of domino effect of stupidity when you make bad CAD designs that doesn't take reality into account. To get the marbles into the lifting gears is really straightforward, but I've been spending a lot of time thinking about how to get them out of the lifting gears. And in the end, I've come up with this fang kind of shape that has been beautifully machined in aluminium by Alex CNC. Alex is part of the MMX team and I leave a link to his great YouTube channel in the description. But anyway, since I'm mixing aluminium with mild steel here, I have to address the elephant in the room. Galvanic corrosion can occur when you mix two kinds of metals, like in this case aluminium with mild steel. But we have looked at this problem, and unless we are going to tour underwater in salty seas with the Marble Machine X, and however fun that would be, it's not in the plan right now, we don't have a problem with galvanic corrosion. The most famous example is the Statue of Liberty that had to be renovated in the 80s due to galvanic corrosions. But for the Marble Machine X, no need to start a flame war in the comment fields. <laughs> oh, by the way, now when we're on the subject of galvanic corrosion, I made a Marble Machine X t-shirt. I'm so proud of this. I spent a lot of work on this print and I really think it came out actually great. I call it the I Believe t-shirt. It like symbolizes that you, like me, think that the Marble Machine X one day we'll stand on that stage on the world tour premiere playing beautiful music. I made the artwork for the t-shirt inspired by vintage patent blueprints. 
I started with a line drawing screenshot from Fusion 360 and then added text in Photoshop. And then I printed eight separate A4 papers in very gray, low opacity print. And I filled them in by hand to add a kind of artistic human touch to the lines. And I did this for all eight A4 papers and then I could puzzle them together into the big print like this. Then I could scan every single A4 page in 600 DPI and stitch them together again in Photoshop, which resulted in a mega sized Photoshop document with super high resolution. And when the first test print came back on the actual t-shirts, I thought that the quality was actually spot on. It was really what I wanted to try to achieve. So this t-shirt is organic cotton and it has the fair wear symbol. And we are climate compensating this t-shirt through myclimate.org. But the absolute best thing with this t-shirt is that it has anti-galvanic corrosion properties. So I've tested these anti-galvanic corrosion properties. I took this chunk of aluminum here and then placed the t-shirt in between and on top, I placed this mild steel MMX logo. And I've been leaving it like this for several minutes. And as you can see here, no trace at all of galvanic corrosion. So check out the Marble Machine X I Believe t-shirt right below this video. I'm super proud of it. I got it to exactly the finish I wanted it. And it's anti-galvanic corrosion properties is just a big bonus on top of that. I shaped the point of the aluminum fang to make it easier for the marbles to exit the gear. And now I have to tap an M8 thread in these two holes in the frame to attach the sub-assembly to. First I thought I had to disassemble the whole machine to do this, but then I realized if I just turn the gear a little bit, I could align the hole with the lever openings in the programming gear, and then I could actually tap them with the frame in place. Almost all of our parts are laser cut, which means that the laser has work hardened the contours of this metal. So you see me screwing up a lot of tapping on this channel, and it's partly because of bad techniques and patience, but also partly because I've been working with work hardened steel. But this is about to change now. With a bigger drill, I will remove more of the work hardened hard metal. And I'm gonna use these three steps taps. Perfect tap holding clutch. Hoschleistung schneid paste. So the first tap cut really easily. Switching the first tap. There's the second one. Second one cuts good as well, and third one cuts great. This geometry in CAD. Never IRL. What will happen? And then I wanted to minimize the distance between the aluminium fang and the plywood groove to make it easier for the marbles to climb up on the aluminium fang. So I inserted a washer to kind of angle the aluminium fang more towards the plywood. As you can see here, a lonely single marble does not want to climb the aluminium fang and exit the gear. But this is part of the design. The idea is that when several marbles come simultaneously, they will push each other up the hill, so to speak, and out of the gear. The gear will always be full of incoming marbles, so this is according to the design and not a problem. But admittedly, I was hoping that the marbles would climb the fang a little bit easier and also the mild steel oval is quite magnetized, but later I found out a big improvement regarding this behavior. But first I started to bend the PMMA pipe. Let me put a kick drum to that. I thought I was going to find matches, but it was a shaker with rice. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this design mistake with the trapped screw is a gift that just keeps on giving. <laughs> I realized immediately that the PMMA pipe when inserted made matters even worse. So I tried to bend the tube a little bit away from the area and then I enlarged the holes and I used much shorter screws than intended. It's not perfect, but it works. And it's a good lesson for my CAD designing to think, basically to actually think while I'm designing. <laughs> I found a trick with using medical silicone rod for tube bending from computer cooling system. You know, the custom build system that looks really nice. And I'm trying to keep the silicone rod in for as long as possible. And first, when I'm happy with the bands, I can try to pull it out. This this took all my strength, it was like borderline. And as you can see here, the marble is flowing really nicely. Thanks to the silicon rods, the inner radius of the curves are intact and I could go over to the bandsaw and cut off the excess. Boom! All these laser cut parts were sent first to Alex CNC in Munich and he post processed the parts by cutting these M4 threads for the set screws. And it was a real luxury to just weld everything together and have these threads ready for the set screws. So thanks so much for that, Alex. Here I'm doing the absolute first test. Let's see what happens. Hmm, this gave me mixed feelings. You can see that the marbles are struggling to get into the pipe. The principle is there, but the execution is far from perfect. And even worse, you can see that some marbles are falling down the gear backwards. When the gear is full with marbles, this would occur less, but I needed to investigate more closely what is causing these problems. Mythbuster style in three, two, one. Let's check more closely how the drop-off is performing. As you can see here, a single marble actually gets a little bit stuck before going into the ring gear because this is a little bit too high. The first tweak we need to do is that this opening needs to move a little bit further down. Now let's check how the marbles travels through the pipe. Hmm, no tweaks needed for this section anyway. So let's turn our focus to the real culprit. Is it really a mere coincidence that the only area where we combine two different kinds of metals is the area that causes us problems? Isn't it much more likely that galvanic corrosion is behind this? Is galvanic corrosion anxiety seriously reducing your life quality? Scientific methods has proven that the Marble Machine X I Believe t-shirt gives you the protection you need. Disc gear 1 has 4mm disc magnets with the polarities faced the same way. This gear has alternate positions. So here we have south, north, south, north. So when you're putting all the polarities at the same direction, you're forcing the magnets to lie in a position they don't want to, making them losing their magnetic force via induction faster than this configuration. But what's interesting is that these weaker magnets positioned in this way creates a very strong magnetic field between them. Some kind of nice magnetic field is created within each marble. So what it feels like is that we're getting the best of all the world with this configuration. Whoa, I forgot the coolest part. Once we have these magnets in opposite direction in this wheel, this whole wheel becomes a demagnetizer. So when this marble gets stuck on the aluminium fang, like so, and the south magnet is changed to the north magnet, this gear will repel the marble. 
So actually the next magnet will actually throw the marble off the track automatically. When I put these magnets in, I turned some of them by mistake 180 degrees and when I'm throwing the marble like this, you can see that the marble is searching for that spot between a south and a north polarity. The marble wants to stay there much rather than anywhere else. Do you see that? So actually this way, I have to force it there. It doesn't even want to be there. It wants to be rotated like this. See, it snaps into place there. This magnet only snaps to the ones without cross. If I turn it around so the other pole comes forward, it will only snap to the crosses. So here I'm switching all the polarities to make everything alternating. So the first thing I noticed is that marbles in groups like this will not fall down even here on the 90 degree slope here. Notice how these marbles that are standing still get demagnetized. Hmm, so it worked perfect in the beginning and then this thing was forced outwards and we have a double group and after that everything went wrong. So if I just restart and go a little bit slower. Okay, that looks nice. What is cool now is that these marbles here get demagnetized and this whole thing is not magnetic anymore. You saw they were running by themselves and this thing is not magnetic and behind here the marbles also get demagnetized from the new pattern. So super successful at slow rates. Let's make another slow one just for fun. So this is definitely the correct polarities of the magnets. I'm super happy we changed that, but I want to tweak this section. It always hurts me a little when I have this pitch perfect part from a skilled machinist like Alex, and I just go killing them with an angle grinder. <laughs> but anyway, this is trial and error design process. And I'm sure that a shorter aluminium fang will have several advantages. We will have more marbles pushing forward and less marbles holding back. So I really believe in this change. Look at my sturdy workbench here. <laughs> I might have the least sturdy workbench on YouTube. 240 grit sandpaper? No, that's shaking the whole bench. So here I'm checking the transition for the marbles from the aluminium fang and into the pipe. And I need to build a little extra bump on the aluminium to really push the marbles out and into the tube. So I used some recycled parts and added this little bump. This little bump will stick into the opening of the PMA pipe and make the transition smooth. And here I'm manipulating the PMA pipe to constrain the marbles into one single row. So the trick is to find the perfect opening where the marbles flow nicely, but it should be as tight as possible, so only one single row of marbles can come through. This will prevent marbles from coming up on the side of each other and clogging the opening. So after thoroughly murdering the finish of Alex's part, I can now put everything back on the machine, including all the new tweaks, and make a first test.
figure 8 marble lifting pattern is inspired by the marble machines from Ronald Walters and Matthias Vandel. And in the beginning of the Marble Machine X process, we did evaluate having holes like on Matthias and Ronald's marble machines instead of the magnets. We did a lot of calculations and we saw that to make those systems fast enough, the aesthetics of the machine would suffer a lot. And I think using magnets is a good example of where my care for the aesthetics have severely damaged the function of the machine because these magnets are causing so much issues. There was a lot of people who were negative against the ID and I'm kind of grown agreeing with them. <laughs> I think if I would look back on this process, if there's something I would have done differently, I would not have used the magnets. But once we get this to work, it looks so stupidly cool. So in the end, it's worth it. Anyway, we're gonna drive this thing all the way home, all the way up onto that stage on the World Tour premiere. I wanna say a huge thanks to my amazing team of engineers from all over the world. There are Marble Machine X related projects going on in around 14 locations. Together we are finishing this machine. And I also want to say a huge thanks to everyone who are crowdfunding this project through Patreon or through YouTube channel memberships. Your support is literally lifting the Marble Machine X up onto that stage. And last but not least, I want to thank you for watching. See you all on the next Wintergatan Wednesday.